and welcome back to episode number six here of battle for victory here at scarborough athletic and since the last episode where we finished off with a one nil defeat away at spennymore we then drew one all with alfreton in a game that we would have expected to win we then bet levington two nil in a game which was i thought would be tighter than what it was tyrese on 91st minute penalty sealed the three points for us there then we absolutely smashed Kings Lynn, 6 1 victory over there. Michael Colson with a hat trick. Tyrese Onyeka, Kieran Burton, and James Gale getting the goals there. We then snuck a 1 0 victory over Peterborough Sports. Luca Colville scoring late on there to secure three points for us. We then dropped points against Gloucester, conceding a 93rd minute equaliser. Lucas Tomlinson getting the equaliser to Will Thornton's goal in the 82nd minute. We then beat Chester by three goals to two in a game which we led 3 0 in and we let them back in. There was a slight worry towards the end of that that we were going to completely blow that we then beat southport 2-0 dylan hill and daniel bramwell getting the goals there it means that the league table looks like this we have 81 points we secured a playoff place in the last game we are two points clear of banbury eight clear of chester and 11 clear of darlington and kings lynn and it gives us a real good chance now of hopefully progressing it's realistically now two horse race with six games to go and as we showed in the last episode we have a nice little run in as well Favourable to say the least. Kettering who are 12th, Curzon National who are 22nd, Chorley who are 20th, Buxton who are 18th, Telford who are 21st, and then lastly, Banbury. And I mean, if we win all five games and they win all their five games, that will be for the title last game of the season. And we've had our youth intake, but the weird thing is, is that the youth intake we've had, we had these players at the start of the season. Jude Monday, Chris Dennis, I'm sure they were here at the start of the season. Jude Monday, I'm pretty sure, was here. So no proper youth intake it seems to have come through at the start of the season which is kind of bizarre but there's nothing really you can do about it we have the opening game of this episode and we have advice to make six changes to the team let's just do it and let's have a look at what we have so we have crackling and gold burton williams gouda and kelly across the back colville maloney roland and lynn in midfield and on yaka and colson are the two strikers and we're going to bring on kieran waleji to play well to be on the bench a right back or centre back. I think that will just bolster it slightly. Maybe we'll remove Lewis Lang and bring in. Who do we bring in? No, I think we'll leave it like that. Actually, we'll leave Lewis Lang on. We got brought, also brought in Sam Murray, who is from Manchester United, and just trying to have a look at his numbers at the moment. He's coming on a trial. One of the youth players is going to get released by one of the big clubs. At the moment, I mean, he's got good determination, good acceleration. We're still waiting to see some of the other numbers come through. But at the minute, isn't really setting the world alight, but might be a play that we can bring in for strength in depth, especially if he doesn't want an awful lot of money. So opening game of potentially six today, as Maloney takes a free kick just over the bar there, our first chance of the game. Potentially six games. If we get the title sealed up early, we won't show all six games. Also, I know I said that it will be our last episode of this season. Obviously, if we make the playoffs, then tomorrow's episode will be a playoff special. But obviously there's a long way to go still, six games to go before all that comes to fruition. And Banbury are currently drawing 0-0 with Blythe, who are, I can't see them on the table. Where are they? They're in 17th. So a I mean, game you'd expect them to win and they have gone 1-0 up in their game. It means the league table. They've gone above us on goal difference. That's the thing. They were the one team that I didn't want catching up with us because their goal difference was so high compared to ours. But... As that ball has been missed by Cooper on Yeka, he's in behind now, into the box goes Torres on Yeka, and he's it straight at Gregory. Great chance there to take the lead on the stroke of half time, and he's fluffed his lines there, and it's been a really poor first half. And Kettering will be the happier of the two sides. They've been the dominant side, and they lead, um, and they're level. They lead on the stats, but still nil nil. Davis looks forward for Mintus into Willock now, coming in full from that left side, gives it back to Mintus, trying to run at the defence in between the full back and centre back now. Pulls it for Willock, who's free, and he misses the target. Great chance there. All the chances of Kettering have had, they've one highlight, that chance there, which was a poor miss. Really, as Mintus gets in behind, am I going to eat my words? I am, because Darren, Darnell Mintus makes it 1-0 to Kettering inside the hour, and that is not what we needed to start off this episode doing today. Maloney, infield to Hill, looks like ball for Onyeka. Onyeka with a chance, he's had two good chances in this game, straight after going a goal down, and we had a chance to get back on level terms. Onyeka, two shots on target, both of them have been pretty poor, to be honest, and with 20 minutes to play, we are... I was going to say we're coming back into this game a little bit after going a goal down, but we've given the ball away. 
and Stora there on the far side gets past his man, rides the challenge, has a chance to get the crossing. Willock's arriving at the far post and hits it straight at Cracknell. Good chance there for Willock to get a second and really seal this game as Burton finds Glynn. Glynn with the crossing on Yekka, looked like he was offside. Is he offside down there? Been disallowed. I looked instantly like he was in an offside position. Oh, it was way offside as well. The ball was great and the header was good as well. But a yard or two offside, that is really, really poor. But the highlights are flowing now. And we're starting to look the better team, but we've given them a goal advantage, which isn't great as Sharp now has this ball on the near side, getting away from his man. Can the challenge go in? It doesn't go in. Willock will get up for this, headed away from him. And Maloney lays it back to Will Edgy, who brings it out now, running with it. Going a long way with it, gives it into Colville, carries on his run, goes past him, Maloney now. Under a little bit of pressure, switches out to the left-hand side and Burton. Burton now, over halfway. What? Burton, ball over the top. Glynn gets in behind. Glynn with a chance and he's missed the target. Mintus now turns and tries to get away from his man. Inside right channel, Burton nips in to clear it away. Bakari though, into Shrimpton. Ball over the top. Willock's in between the full-back and centre-back again. Willock seals the game, Shea Willock. It is 2-0 to Kettering. And we haven't deserved anything from this game. And we haven't got anything from this game. And we are going to drop off the top of the table. Because Banbury, who have the lead, even if they can... Well, they have a two-goal lead now. Stevens with both the goals. We'll be a point behind them. Nine behind them on the goal difference. And this is not the way we want to start today. 2-0 defeat to Kettering. Need to regroup here. As we line up with Cracknell, Burton, Gouda, Langan, Kelly, Bramwell, Rowland, Maloney, Colville in midfield, Gale and Onyeka up front. We're at home against Curzon Ashton. We're 22nd in the league table. We need to pick up points today. We cannot afford to drop any more. Banbury are away at Gloucester today as that ball's thrown long into wearing. I don't expect them to drop any more points as that goes through. Hayhurst smashes it in. It's 1 0, and what? What a bad start. Falling towards wearing, takes it down. Go back to goal. Give it to McGlinchy. McGlinchy threw back to Waring. Waring with a chance to double it. And he has. George Waring makes it 2-0. And two goals in five minutes. And we are falling apart at the seams here today. Lee now. Looks up ball over the top for Bramwell. Bramwell gets in behind. Bramwell has a chance to get one back. And he does just that. Daniel Bramwell makes it 2-1. Ten minutes into the second half. Oh, it's an own goal off Marcus Poshka. I'm not sure why that goal has been taken off Bramwell. Lee with the ball into the inside right channel. Bramwell with great control to take it down. Looks to get the shot away. Oh, the deflection completely wrong footed the keeper. Didn't notice that on first sight. It's 2 1, and we're back into the game. Ball in. I hear chest sat there, and Cracknell can collect it comfortably. Half an hour left to play. Banbury are losing in their game against Gloucester as well. Both of the two leading sides trying their best to throw it away at the present moment in time as Glynn fixed that into the path of Colson. Coming in Phil from the left-hand side. Switches it over to Bramwell. Bramwell has a chance there. Bramwell makes it two. And it's two all. And he gets two goals in a couple. Well, he gets one goal and one technically assist for the own goal. It is two all. And we are back in here. Changing formation. We've gone to the 4-2-3-1. We've gone to the Gagan press. And we have caught Curzon Ashton out here twice. Bramwell inside right channel both times. Finishing across the goalkeeper. It is two all. And we are back in with a shout here. And Yeka goes up for it. Doesn't win it. But he gets the second ball. Bramwell now. Back to Lewis Lang. He looks over the top for Onyeka, who flicks it on, but there's no one there. And Renshaw comfortably can collect it. Going into the final 10 minutes plus stoppage time now. Still two all here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. And this result doesn't really suit, probably doesn't suit either of us. I'm not seeing how the bottom of the table looks with Curzon Ashton, but surely they'll be looking for three points here as Lang looks over the top. It's headed towards Bramwell, who takes it away from Sloan. Bramwell's going to get into the box now, towards the bottom. Pulls it across for Tyrese Onyeka. And what a comeback in this second half. Scarborough Athletic 3, Curzon Ashton 2. Tyrese Onyeka gives us the lead. We have not been... Well, we weren't good in the first half. We've been a lot better in the second half. And Daniel Bramwell has been at the centre of it. Brilliant run to the byline. Pulls it back. And Tyrese Onyeka just lets it run across his body. Slots it in to the bottom corner. It's Scarborough 3, Curzon Ashton 2. Lang does brilliantly there to win that ball back, bringing it forward from the centre-back position. Colson into Onyeka. He's been missed. Goes to Glynn, and Glynn sears all three points. 4-2. What a second-half turnaround this is. Banbury still aren't winning. We'll be back to two points ahead of them with the results as they stand at the moment. Lang brought it forward from the centre-back position. He laid it into Colson. Tried to play through for Onyeka, sort of made the challenge, but it fell to Glynn, who slides it under the goalkeeper. It's 4-2. And it is three points coming back, to, well, staying at the Flamingo Land Stadium as Banbury still trail Gloucester by a goal to nil. And they've just suffered a red card as well to Williams. And it looks as if 
We're going back top of the table, two points clear of Banbury, a 4-2 victory. Poshka with an own goal on the 55th minute that I thought should have been credited to Bramwell. He then got his own goal on the 60th minute, set up Torres on Yeka on 81, and Kieran Glynn sealing the deal 87 minutes in, and we get all three points. Bramwell was the best player on the pitch, averaged an 8.3, and will get man of the match and fully deserves it. And there is the league table, two points clear of Banbury. 42 games played, four left to play. They lost 1-0 at Gloucester, and we are back top of the table, and it's going to be a topsy-turvy running. I can just feel it. Games are coming thick and fast as we travel to Chorley, who are in 19th. Banbury host Peterborough Sports, who are in 20th. So both these teams fighting for their lives, hoping that they can pick up three points against one of the big guns. We need to keep our second half form in the last game up and hopefully come away with another three points. Team is going to look like this. Cracknell is in goal. Petrovic, Lee, Williams and Kelly across the back. Bramall, Hill, Rowland and Glynn are the midfield four. And Gale partners Colson up front as we look to get another three points and just carry on this run towards promotion. Ambry are 3-1 up against Peterborough Sports and that should be that sorted as Lee heads that free kick away. Bramall flicks it on and Glynn is going to get there first and it's 2-2 two two at the back and Glynn holds the ball up and Samson goes through the back of him. That is really, really poor. Glynn has been one of our best players this season and it's through to Ustabasi. Ustabasi smashes it over. Chorley have had two really good chances here and they've missed the target with both of them and we're going to demand a little bit more for the final few minutes and oh, there's a highlight as Burton goes into Bramwell now. Back to Burton. Bramwell infield. Into the box. Bramwell from distance. He's... I thought that found its way and it beat the goalkeeper but it beat the far post as well and it remains nil-nil. And it looks as if, is it too late to go and just absolutely lump it forward? I think it probably is. Let's get some width as well. Let's just see, is there anything there for us? Burton into Bramall. Tries to get the crossing, smashed away. Williams is going to get there first. Williams looks down the line for Glynn, heads it back into the path of Hill, into the box. Lays it back to Kelly. Oh, Tomlinson nips it, but it falls to Glynn and it's saved. And Bra what a chance. We weren't good enough today. That's how much we should have been winning. Just Kieran Glynn looks disheartened. Everyone else is hyped up for it. We drop back down to second. Banbury win. And it is neck and neck. It's just goal difference that splits us. They have plus 42. We have plus 33. Three games in. And I think we have been. There's been a different team top after each game. Banbury. We started top. Then Banbury went top after the first game. We went top after the second game. And after the third game. Banbury are back top. 85 points. Is a mixed bag here, but we need to return to winning ways next time out against Buxton. Oh, we have had our new youth intake, and we have had an excellent intake, five stars. We have Claudio Sessa, who's an Australian, one star, four and a half star potential. Levi Weaver, Weaver sorry, who is a Welsh midfielder, one star credibility, five star potential. A couple down here, Paul, Paul Murphy, one star, three and a half star potential ability. Sam Jones, also three and a half star, and going down. Jim Vance, Matthew Austin, Hobbs, all three and a half star as well. Let's have a look at the numbers of Claudio Sousa, who's a left back. 15 decision making, 13 jump from each, 13 natural fitness. Pace is pretty low for a full back, as I've just hit that. Crossing is at six, his passing is at six. Um, I wonder how good he might actually turn out to be. Levi Weaver is a central midfielder. Decent passing, decent natural fitness, acceleration is okay. Pace is okay, stamina is okay, work rate is pretty good, termination is okay. He could be a decent central midfielder in years to come. As I said before, the games come thick and fast. Banbury travel to 23rd place. Bradford Park Avenue who need to win to get back in contention for safety. We take on 18th place Buxton who look like they are... They're not mathematically safe but they are pretty much there. Any points from today's game will all but seal their place in the Vanarama National League North for next season. Both of us need to win. We need to score some goals as well to pull back this goal difference. But let's go do it. We have made changes as well. We've moved back to the 4-2-3-1. Hill is struggling a little bit. I think we're going to leave him on. No, he's not. He's 95 and 97. We're going to leave him on. Nonetheless, and we're going to play Cracknell and goal. Burton, Williams, Gouda and Kelly. Hill and Maloney is a midfield duo. The three behind the striker, Colson on the left, Bram on the right, Glynn up front, um, playing just behind, Onyeka up front. And let's go do this and let's try and get three more points and move back to winning ways and hopefully pick up on a slip up that Banbury hopefully will give us.
Badbury have taken the lead. Connor Carty has scored for them against Bradford Park Avenue. Means that they will be two points clear of us as things stand. Ball fired long. Gouda gets up to win the header. Hill takes it down. Looks in towards Glynn. Glynn has done brilliantly well there. Glynn hits a shot from distance over the bar. Kelly looks in and Brisley clears it away. Who's going to get there first? It's Colson. Colson there. Gets the cross in. Missed by everyone. Bramwell at the far post. Can he pull it back? He does pull it back for Glynn. Tackle goes in. Can he get the shot away? It's blocked by his own man, I think, there. Hill nips in to get it back. Into Colson. Coming in field. Cross towards the far post. Solomon heads it away. Picked back up by Bramwell. His touch is poor. And it's cleared away. And Buxton get away with it there. And I think Gale and Glynn just going each other's way there, which blocked the shot. Because I feel like Glynn would have hit the back of the net from 12 yards. As that boy's fired up towards Gale. He doesn't win the header, but Hill wins it. Gives it to Colson. Infield for Glynn, but it's a poor ball. Solomon can clear it away, but his clearance is only as far as Burton. Lays the infield to Williams. Ball up towards Gale, who doesn't win the header yet again. Glynn switches out to Bramwell. Chess it passes man. Bramwell with a chance. Fires it into the bottom corner. Sixth goal of the season for Daniel Bramwell. And he has really stepped up here towards this back end of this season. He gives us a lead on the half an hour mark. We level Bambury's result as it stands. It's 1-0 there. It's 1-0 here. And we both have, I think that's 87 points as things will stand. And we have a really good chance now to build on this. We have been by far the better team. Buxton haven't really given us too much to worry about. As Carter gets in behind and fires it over the bar. The amount of shots we're having that aren't on target. If we can just get the ball into the box, we should be able to get more on target. Which then should result in us scoring more goals, you would think. As Kirby fires that ball in, they look like there's a lot of players offside there. It's headed away and Sorkeld picks it up first. Out to Kirby. Back into Sorkeld there. Lays it back to Brisley. Colson nips in to win that back with Kirby. Picks up the loose ball into Gallagher. Gallagher with the shot and the keeper dived the wrong way. And Buxton level five minutes into the second half. And Gallagher gets the goal and really not the way we wanted the second half to start. They just held onto the ball in the middle of the pitch. Colson nipped in but Kirby picked up the loose ball. Wordsworth into Gallagher. He went one on one and I don't know what the goalkeeper's doing there. Cracknell goes down to his left. The ball goes past him to his right. It's one or and not. The way we wanted to start this second half. Bambury have done the opposite of us. And scored two quick goals in the second half. They have 88 points as it stands. Goals for Carty. He has a hat trick now. Two in five minutes from there. That boy's fight towards Gouda. Takes it down. Here's the shot. And Folks collects it comfortably. That was a poor effort. 16 shots. Five on target. But we just don't have that cutting edge. That we really need to be considered champions here it's one all still there is 10 minutes to play substitutes but we're at that point now where i'm not sure if the substitutes are going to be are going to be good enough if i'm completely honest we have made all three now and we just need to keep pushing and hopefully find a goal we have a throw in on the far side with eight minutes to play plus stop time ball in towards bramwell it's headed away it's going to be picked up by kelly flicks into the box there's a tackle that's got to be a penalty Oh, referee, he went right through. I think he might have got some of the ball, but he went right through the player there. And Bun now comes over halfway. Counter-attack is on for Buxton. Lays it back to Dyke. We really don't want to lose this game because then we need Bambi to drop points, not just to us, but to someone else as well. Kelly in field to Gouda now. He looks long towards Glynn. Great touch from Glynn now. As a tackle goes in, Gale. Lee back into Glynn. Back to Lee. Lovely little play now. Over the top for Gale. Has a chance to make a name for himself. And James Gale gets his fourth of the season. A really well worked goal. And James Gale, who hasn't scored many this season, chips in with his fourth. And it is 2-1. And it was really well worked. Really well held onto by the boys. Glynn laid it back into Lee. He chipped it over the top for Gale. Great touch. And it's a lovely, calm finish. As Bradford Park Avenue have got one back against Banbury. I think it'll be just too little, too late, if I'm completely honest. If they got a second, it might just make them nervous. Maloney puts that ball into us. Gouda. Gale with a header straight at Falks. And it remains 2-1 here. Another chance for Gale. As it's fired long and it should be dealt with comfortably by our defence. And it is as Kelly brings it up halfway now. Has to go back to the goalkeeper. And Cracknell in a really precarious position there. As Lee has been dispossessed by Gallagher. Gallagher running through. Add to Osborne on the left-hand side. Osborne runs into the box. There's a man inside for him. Osborne and he misses the target. And what a chance for Buxton. They had one shot on target and scored it. That could have been two for two. And as much as we wouldn't deserve it, as Bradford Park Avenue have got a second back. We win 2-1. We pick up three points and played, I say played very well. I didn't read that before I clicked it. How did Banbury finish up? They held on and won by three goals to two. They have a 
Not investing all different still. There's two games to play. And we obviously we played them last game of the season. We play Telford before them as well. Hopefully we need to beat Telford. And then just go into that last game. Who do Banbury play in that penultimate game? They play Spennymore, who in fifth. There is a chance that we could go into that final day of the season, top of the league table, and that would be the most perfect scenario. So here we go, penultimate game of the season. We travel away to Telford, who sit in 22nd, I believe. 21st, sorry. They have to win to really try and help their survival cause. Banbury take on fifth place, spending more. We'll be trying to look to get into those second and third places to hopefully miss out on the first ties in the playoffs. It's going to be tough for both of us for different reasons here. I would rather our tie than theirs, but the way Banbury have been playing, I would expect them to pick up all three points. And we've got to assume they're going to pick up all three points. In the last, I mean, since the turn of the year, they've only lost two games. It's only been four games that they haven't won. A one or draw with Chester, a two or draw with Brackley. They lost two on to Darlington and one nil to Gloucester. The only games they haven't won all season. Just can't remember. How did we go on about against them? We beat them 3-2 when we last played them. Goals for Kieran Glynn and Bailey Gouda. We were 1 0 down, 1 all, 2 1 up, 2 2, and then Bailey Gouda made it 3 2, and we won the game at their place last time out. Hopefully, the fact that we're playing at home in that last day, last game of the season helps us out no end. But let's go do this. Let's go and hopefully get three points today. Hopefully, Banbury slip up, and then that puts us in the driving seat going to the last game of the season. What would be ideal and Hopefully would put the pressure on Bam Bambury a little bit. Is an early goal from us. Glynn with the jo What a strike from Kieran Glynn. Tenth of the season for him. It's 1-0. And I said an early goal would probably put the pressure on Bambury. We have done just that. Four minutes on the clock. Bailey Gouda here. Lays it back to Lang. Or has the ball long towards Gale. He does fantastically well to win the header. Glynn takes a touch and just fires it from the angle past the goalkeeper. I think the goalkeeper was expecting the cross. The shot completely caught him off guard. Four minutes in, Scarborough lead by a goal to nil. And that is exactly what we needed to do today, today as Hill touches it past his man. It goes back to Goudinet. Bramwell, can we get a second quickly? I mean, that would be the icing on top of the cake for sure. Now, can we pressure Piggott? We can't as he fires it along towards Green. Let's not let them back into this game very quickly. Green gets the cross in. Burton can flick the header away, but it's only as far as Allen on this near side. Lays it back to Hassan Smith. It's the shot and it's onto the top of the net. Still 1-0, but... We cannot afford to let Telford back into this game, especially as quickly as we've just done. That ball is flicked up there. Alan, ball over the top for Oswell. Oswell's in, and Oswell makes it one all. And Telford have just absolutely bombarded us since we took the lead. And eight minutes into the game now, Telford won, Scarborough won. And we just, we haven't been good since the goal. It's only been four minutes, but not good enough. It's one all. And this game looks like it's going to be action packed here as Burton now left channel and he gets past his man has to go back and goes inside to Hill now Gale comes deep to collect it into Glynn turns fires it out to the right side and Kelly keeps in crossing falls to Bramble and it's 2-1 and inside 12 minutes it's 2-1 and what a start to this game we go back top of the table we went top we dropped back down and in 12 minutes of these 3 o'clock games we are back on top of the table Scarborough 2 Telford 1 the cross was blocked it fell to Bramall who just volleyed it in first time what a goal what a strike and it is 2-1 if one of us was to win and the other were to lose there would be a 3 point advantage if Banbury were to win and we were to lose Banbury would all but be secure because we would have to overturn around about 10 goals which means we'd have to beat Banbury by at least five which i can see us beating banbury i don't like i'm not scared i think we could i think it could result could go either way i just don't think either one of us is going to smash the other five or six nil that ball goes into colson and it's found its way in he took a deflection off someone and colson gets his 27th of the season it's 3-1 just before half time and a two goal lead is exactly what we needed here bramwell does well on the right hand side lays it back into kelly he fires the ball across and colson's shot Took a deflection off the defender's foot. Tried to block it. Sent the keeper the wrong way. It's 3-1. And that is what we needed. As Banbury look like they're going to go to half time at their game. At home against Spennymore. At 0-0. And what a position to be in here. As Colson puts his ball in. It's cleared away. Hill. Can we get a fourth? Goes back into Gale. Back to goal. Lays it back into Hill. Lang has some space. Gouda. Oh, through ball for Colson. Who's got him behind. Takes a deflection onto the roof of the net. And that would have been an that would have been ideal. A 
three goal lead 4-1 we've created loads and scoreboard reflects it it would have made the goal difference look a hell of a lot better as we're into the opening minute of the first, second half and the shot there fired over the bar and we go into the final 10 minutes now watching the clock watching this score hoping that that nil next to spending more ticks over to one it doesn't look like it's going to but it looks as if we are going to be in the driving seat going into that final game of the season it is a 3-1 victory here away at Telford Banbury draw 0-0 nil -nil with Spennymore. They don't find the target. We go back top once again. One game to play. It's against Banbury. It's all or nothing. A draw would see us win the title. Defeat will see Banbury win it. And a victory, of course, will see us win it. And it's all to play for. But we are in the driving seat. And that's all we could have hoped for. Team meeting has been held. Everyone is in good spirits for this game. Cracknell is in goal. Burton, Gouda, Lang and Kelly across the back. Rowland and Maloney are the two midfielders. Colson on the left. Bramble on the right. And Glenn plays just behind Gale. It's a shame that we don't have Tyrese Onyeka to play up front in this game. 21 goals he's got this season. But we do have Michael Coulson who has 27 so far this season. Hopefully he can add to that today. Because I think if he adds to that today, I don't think we lose. And I think we go up as champions. After how this episode has gone, I really don't want to be going to the playoffs tomorrow. Because we have shown today that we can beat some really good teams. But we can also just blow up against some good teams as well we've been on a good run lately so go out and impress me this is huge we know defeat means that oh, you're kidding ben Akwe scores the opening goal of the game it's scarborough what a nil banbury one oh that away end that those banbury fans who've come up from oxfordshire will be absolutely bouncing here five minutes in first chance of the game for them they get the opening goal which means that they will go top of the table, 92 points to our 91. But we know the position we are in. All we need is a draw. We want to go and win it. Of course we do. But all we need is a draw. And that will see us into the National League for next season. Four minutes into the second half. We've been the better team. We have better XG. More shots. More shots on target. But they have that goal from Akwe in the opening five minutes of the game. And... They're bringing the ball forward now. We can't lay a finger on them at this present moment in time. Ball through for Stevens. Lang with a great tackle there. And hopefully we can build something from the back. Bramwell inside left channel. Goes past his man. Into the path of Gale there. Gale looks for Glynn. He's cleared away as far as Colson. Colson into the box. And oh, he lashed at it. What a chance for Michael Colson. Get us back on level terms. And then Rasula will put this ball in. And Jamie Egan fires it home. It was missed by everyone at the near post. Jamie Egan makes it 2-0. And that... I think is going to be that today. We are... Oh, wait. That's not counted. It's still 1-0. No, we still have a chance with half an hour to play. We are into the final moments of this game. Ball 5-4. There's a penalty. And it's the last kick of the game. And the difference between us getting promoted. Michael Coulson <laughs> scores with the last kick of the game. And we go up as champions. What? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. We draw one all. It's a sh shocking penalty. It goes under Rad Ratcliffe. And we'd... we're champions of the Valorama National League North. And oh my goodness, what a way to do it. Scarborough Athletic won. Banbury won. Champions of the Valorama National League North. That means that promotion is secure. It means we go up. That is an incredible finish. I cannot believe the way we have gone up. Scarborough Athletic 1, Banbury 1. We are champions. If you've liked today's episode, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next time for the transfer window as we look to build for the National League. <laughs>